What is up guys, we have another analysis video for me for you and this is from the Africa International Schools Chess Championships. Now I wanted to um, post these games as they were going on but sadly the annotations did not come as fast as the games did and even as at the recording of this video not all the games have been analyzed. Uh, we have part of the games mostly from the 11, 13 and I think 17 um, age, age group so, so we will do videos on these games and basically we are just going to do four games per video for each age group uh hopefully the seven nine um and the 15 age groups will come out consistently for for both male and female but with the ones we have now we are going to work with that them and we are basically going to look at a game from the winner of that age group and we're going to look at one random game so two male games two female games all from the same age group if there are any specific players you would like us to look at or cover uh, just let us know in the comments down below and also don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our twitch channel twitch.tv for slash pen underscore mason where sometimes i do these analysis live the youtube videos may come by i do analyze these videos live a lot so you can check us out there so without much ado let's check out the first game and this is a game between mauto richardson the Ghanaian representative and um muiruri don Kar kamam Kamami. I don't know how to pronounce the Uganda names, but he is a uh, Ugandan representative. Now, it's not every single, not every country has one representative. You can have more than two or three. Some of the age groups, um, we didn't even have a Ghanaian representative for it. So, anyway, let's just check out how this game went. We have um, Muiruri playing white and Mount Richardson playing black. So, we have e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and then bishop to c4 there, uh, Joko Pianissimo. Um, bishop to c5 and then c3. You notice that most of these kids' games, this c3 move is very common. Um, and then we have d6. Now, d6 looks like a, a, like a harmless developing move, but it's actually the biggest mistake of this game. Uh, but we'll get to that after some few developing moves for white here. So let's see how the game continues. We have d4 striking in the center, which was the point of c3, first of all. Um, e takes d4, c takes d4, bishop to b4, check, all these are standard moves, uh, bishop to d2, bishop takes d2, knight takes d2, uh, knight b takes d2, and then we have bishop to g4, and the follow-up move here, I'm going a little bit fast because I want to get through as many games as possible, but the key points, I will mention them. We have queen to b3, and basically, if you, you recall our game, or uh, Pomorphy's Opera game, you realize this was also a problem for the duke. And you can't really defend these two weaknesses. It's, it's either you lose this or you lose this. And the one you really do have to defend is this. You could argue that bishop back makes sense or d5 makes sense here, but it actually does not help in any way. So the only way for black to defend this was to play knight to h6. And already black is in a very, very, very bad position and white is for choice here. So how could all this have been averted? So we go back to the first move here where d6 was played. Um, actually, in this position, black should play knight to f6. And this is basically understanding of, I think, theory. It's really hard to predict everything that's going on here. Granted, there are other moves that black could have played to limit the weaknesses he faced. But regardless, this is what he could have played. And why is this important? So we'll follow the same sequence of move. Now, if d4, e takes d4, c takes d4, bishop to b4, check. Bishop to d2, bishop takes d2, knight b takes d2, queen and uh knight takes knight b takes d2 you would actually play in this position d5 striking in the center and attacking this bishop um if for example your opponent was to play takes here you just simply play knight takes here queen here is not really a problem you can worry about you should worry about um not this move you could actually just leave your your no no you can actually leave it here there's a move here i can't seem to remember i can't seem to remember what the move was i think it has something to do with knight to a5 or something of that sort but here your opponent doesn't have much of an advantage against you mainly because you can play d5 here and you have the knight here to defend the d5 pawn in the uh, in the original game or in the actual game you realize that there was no um knight to defend the d5 push and the d5 push is supposed to be a defensive resource but sadly it wasn't done which is the reason why knight h6 was played here and obviously the position falls from here we have bishop queen takes b7 uh knight a6 not really the move you want to play just simply retreat your bishop back and try and castle but by playing the idea that he went for with knight a5 trying to fork he actually falls into this sort of position where you have a bad knight on the rim knight on the rim madame don't forget 
queen to h5 and um, any other square he moves to either he loses the queen or he goes for a queen trade he doesn't want that so i like that about this move um c6 very slow um i mean it achieves something here but all it achieves is allows the bishop to basically save itself so this is what happens in the actual game you could go for a tempo move that achieves almost the exact same thing you could play for example rook to b8 here and then after bishop back now you play c5 and if d5 here which your opponent might try to play thinking that he's locking everything up you now have bishop here and your opponent simply has to agree to a queen trade uh, most of these squares are just going to be a queen trade or a bad trade for for um for white and now black has some sort of counterplay which would have been good for him but here we had c6 sorry my pc just froze uh we have c6 and after the bishop what's going on with my pc right now what's going on my pc is messing up sorry about that so after bishop to e2 what's going on now we have knight to g4 queen to g5 okay there's something going on with my pc uh -huh. queen takes g5 knight takes g5 knight f6 knight takes e6 check f takes e6 castles king side and here simply put black should just castle if he can or just bring his king up and try to um open up his position but he in turn rather plays knight to b2 the knight was not in danger the knight is actually more active than any of his other pieces but the rook as you can see is very bad and rather than developing the rook to a better square so that he can actually have a fighting position actually the funny the funny thing here is that um white is just a pawn up and um he just has and black is less active so what black should aim at regaining activity and coordination of his pieces while white should basically try quickly to gain an advantageous position before black can actually settle and here we have bishop to a6 knight to d8 d takes c d takes c rook to rook a to c1 knight to d7 uh bishop to b5 knight to b6 simply takes here um, knight to b7 he plays knight to rook to um, c6 better would have simply been rook to um, c7 but anyway it's 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 still fine uh, knight to d8 rook to d6 Th this whole shuffling of the rook was not necessary but you can't fault him he's he, he's still trying to do whatever he can and in this position basically uh black resigns uh he could have still played on he could have I, I wouldn't fault him if he played on but um basically his pawn structure is very bad here uh, his opponent can create a pass pawn here these three pawns are easily stopped by these four pawns uh, you really don't know what you are aiming for in this sort of position but he could have played on i mean the knights are very tricky but he decided he, he decided to resign and that's one thing i saw about his games i think he gives up quite easily there was a game where he was a piece up in a very dominant position and he thought he lost so he resigned but anyway let's move on to the next game we have why is my pc freezing today we have mungal ethan versus kiwanu kasubi uh forgive me if i'm mispronouncing these names uh so let's see how this game went i think ethan was the the winner of the under 11 these are the under 11 uh category so we have d4 d5 c4 e6 queen's gambit declined knight to f3 knight to f6 g3 b6 bishop to g2 bishop to b7 and this is a very interesting position because the stronger bishop should be this one but it can also be the weaker bishop these bishops are challenging each other but the thing is the king is castling towards um this position while this king is castling towards this position uh what do i mean by that it it's very it's more dangerous for the fianchetto um king than for the own fianchetto king ideally it's usually better for the the, the fianchetto position with the king but in this position basically that's what's happening here knight to e5 knight b to d7 e3 bishop to d6 knight takes d7 queen takes d7 castles king side castles king side knight to c3 everything here is fine but this is the important moment of this game c5 if you can't handle pawn tension this is not a move you should willingly play into but i like the fact that i'm seeing this it's a sign that these guys are quite skilled and know what they are doing despite their low rating i think it's about 1300 downwards i wouldn't advise you playing queen's gambit 1300 downwards i think you should start playing such openings like 1500 because of the ramifications of the positions but i mean he he shows he has understanding on this position so we have 
c takes d4 and then c takes d4 and white makes a slight error here he plays the move queen to d4 this position is actually very good for white if white plays the best move we should understand how the trades should happen but by playing queen to d4 you simply uh, get an evenish position if you actually want to fight for an advantage the move to go for is d takes e6 and after f takes e6 bishop takes queen takes and then e takes d4 and basically speaking you have created some problems for your opponent um it and you are actually a pawn up uh, it's five pawns versus six so you've destroyed your opponent's uh king side position a little bit if you would like you could try and go for some castles ca for some uh, king side attack but i mean this position is just quite fine you win a pawn and you can hope for for more in the position but by going for queen takes d4 we get this transformation of the position where basically speaking white doesn't have much of an advantage the good thing about the position for white is this uh, isolated pawn it's very easy it's a very glaring and easy weakness to attack but can also be a strength for black if white doesn't know what to do so the position is quite okay as of now we have bishop to b2 d4 um bishop takes b bishop takes b7 rook takes b7 and then um and then queen to c4 slightly better would have been wait for it d takes c3 d takes c3 leads to so many lines but let's just look at the most obvious line you might actually get from here queen takes is wrong sorry you could actually just play um what's the move here if takes you can simply play takes here and after takes here you are already in a very bad position so you wouldn't want to fall for it uh the other thing was let's I don't want to assume a bad position, but simply play. if you play queen takes here, knight takes here, and this position is already looking very, very bad for, for, for white. And the only thing that black had to do was to simply play taking the pawn and opening things up because there are so many pieces that are hanging and it's not um, easy to decide which line of attack you want to go for. Uh, taking here doesn't really help. Uh, you can just swap here and if trades, you are quite okay as black because uh you have you have more what's the word material as compared to your opponent basically because you've had a better um better traits as co as compared to your opponent because you, you are here you're a piece up if you don't see that so yes the transformation of the position would have been in the favor of um where is my move would have been in the favor of of black should black have played d takes c3 over here but black didn't play that he instead played rook takes b7 which is not a bad move i mean it's a fine move um we have queen to c4 queen to e6 offering the trade of queens uh, and also getting out of that um, that file because of the rook uh, then we have knight to e2 queen takes c4 pawn takes c4 d3 uh, simply trying to make this pawn as deadly as can be but the more he pushes is the harder it is for him to actually defend that pawn we have knight to d4 rook to c7 rook a to c1 uh bishop takes d4 bishop takes d4 rook d to c8 piling up pressure on the now loose pawn rook takes d3 and h6 h6 it's not a move you really want to play uh it doesn't really do much in the position and by playing h6 you allow your opponent to create an opportunity uh it, the game is basically drawn but allowing this sort of pawn structure getting towards the end game is not something you really want to do so what 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 could he have done here he could have simply played for example knight to e4 here and um if your opponent decides to chase you about you just keep on following back into this position and you will win this pawn you you will definitely win this pawn and you get a sort of symmetrical position not symmetrical because of the pawns but you get this sort of position where it's basically a draw but what do we get here we have bishop takes pawn takes and then the rook defends the pawn uh the king start coming in which is very good in the end game always bring out your kings uh i'm just getting to the meaty part of the position here where um what white simply does is he tries to create threat and black should have stopped these threats i think black assumed the position was over so he didn't really make any good forward like moves because by playing king here you allow rook takes check check back you block just keep checking the king into oblivion because now after this check you lose your rook and basically you are about to lose the game again same trick 
uh, black didn't see it black just simply played willingly i think he thought the position was locked that there was nothing to do and he played anyhow and ended up having a bad pull position okay so now we are in the females section and um, elizabeth was the winning of the winner of the females under 11 section i think let me check the flag again she's from kenya she's from kenya and naidu i think who was second or third from south africa so we have e4 c5 knight to f3 e6 and then c3d alapin sicilian this is actually what i recommend for anybody who does not want to play against the sicilian uh, the alapin is actually a very good way to go and after d5 we have e5 uh, you could actually just play for a draw <laughs> if you are boring uh pawn takes pawn takes my pc is freezing sorry about that pawn push and if pawn takes pawn takes you have a very symmetrical position uh this can mostly end in a draw it, the only reason you would win this is if your opponent doesn't have very good position and understanding so on and so forth but um, of course it's, it's not that easy to play but we get e5 and then um d4 bishop to d3 knight to c6 this is already a very crazy position castles king side queen to c7 piling up pressure on the e5 pawn rook to e1 and then g6 we have queen to c2 uh you can't really tell what this move is about maybe you would have preferred to rather play your knight to this square rather it's an idea if you would like uh bishop to g7 and then c takes d4 c takes d4 knight takes d4 and then a6 you might have wondered why didn't he just play uh for example bishop takes rook takes and uh, queen takes well after knight takes pawn takes queen takes and this is just good for um for white which is why he played a6 of course the other moves he could have played but we are not looking at all those moves we are trying to speed through this so we don't go through 20 minutes um knight to a3 knight g to e7 b4 uh the point is you can't take the knight because you are going to lose your queen uh queen to d7 knight takes c6 knight takes c6 rook to b1 knight takes e5 um bishop to b2 knight takes bishop takes knight takes rook takes rook comes in and here already black is having a very good position that's the thing about some of these positions when you just open up a myriad of captures and you don't really know the move order to go about your captures you are literally going to mess yourself up sometimes just have a simple solid position like you get from the italian of course the italian sometimes get complex but some of these simple positions that you can easily see exactly what's going on these solid positions but if you can't handle these tactical shots or tactical type of positions you don't play openings like the sicilian and so on and so forth they might be the popular openings they might be the tried and true openings but they don't match your style so you find you can find a popular opening a good opening that matches your style uh but from the way white played this why didn't really get the transformation of the position and the move orders for the trade so yeah bishop to f6 b5 d4 uh bishop to b7 queen to d3 uh, you wonder what he's going for um rook to c8 and then queen to h3 like what are you aiming for the, the king is not castled here so there's there's no plan here the, there's nothing you are literally aiming for stopping or doing here you don't even have to really defend it if you don't really want to but i mean it's good to defend your weaknesses um <clears throat> we have h5 bishop to g5 queen to d5 the point is if your queen never leaves this square you are in trouble uh we have bishop back to d5 trying to defend this square which makes no sense you can simply just bring your bishop back here and you are fine but after playing this move black finds a very good move here rook to um c3 and you'll be like oh no that's a free rook yeah you can take it and lose the game it's it's up to you how do you want to go <laughs> you can die however way you want to so he plays f3 and he loses a, and she loses a piece i keep on saying he sorry and now uh black is simply up a piece black black was up pawns now black is up pieces and um and um queen to g3 i'm speeding through these games very sorry about that d5 uh queen to b6 king to h1 bishop takes d5 this is a very simple cleanup you can just trade down into an end game where you are the only one up a piece um promote a pawn and then it's it's very clear and easy from that point king to d7 uh bishop to e5 rook to c8 trading down pieces like i said that's the best option you can go for very good by white here trying uh, avoiding the trade but slowly but surely the position is going to fall i don't know if he had it no he didn't have it 
let's move there and then this is basically resignation uh he gives off his queen trades off all his pieces and now this position is completely and easily winning for black so elizabeth won this game uh congrats to her and now the final game how long has this video been going on so far we had a 20 minute mark damn i was trying to make this a 15 minute video anyway this game is going to be very quick um it was actually very interesting most of these games you realize that they were very good opening bit of the middle game end game everything collapsed um which goes to show study your end games and your middle games are a bit but more of your end games e4 e5 uh this is a game by sha janky and j loss rachel um I think it was um, Janky that won this. No, 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 it wasn't Janky who won this. She's, this is the random game I picked. So e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4. Again, the uh, Joko Pianissimo. Uh, bishop to b5, but this time not c3. We have knight to c3, knight to f6, d3, um, h6, which is also good. h3, b6, a3, bishop to e7, knight to d5, castles kingside, and then bishop to b5 bishop to b5 is a it, it doesn't really do anything there, there's no reason for playing <laughs> sorry about that there's no reason for playing bishop to b5 here um you can just try to develop your pieces you could also castle just as black did you could play bishop to um d2 and your position is just fine <laughs> sorry about that the sd hamatan sorry um so the, any of these moves would have been fine for white uh bishop here th there's I, like there's no purpose for this move this move doesn't accomplish anything it's it's just a waste of a temple you could have castled in this position so now uh black please bishop to b7 knight goes back to c3 d6 and then bishop to e3 and now after d5 bishop to d2 so the moves that have been played by um white so far have been very bad bishop knight and then bishop you you have moved these pieces back and forth back and forth you've broken the opening rule of don't move the same piece twice and your king is still stuck in the center so kudos to black for seeing this move breaking open the center while the king is stuck in the center is i mean he's one move away from castling but i mean this is a very good idea to go for and also imagine the position if um white never made this move let's assume that the knight did come back but the knight was still here uh but the bishop was still on c4 you realize that this pawn push wouldn't have been a problem for for white so you should be careful about how you just willy nilly move your pieces you might be creating problems for yourself so now um <clears throat> uh, bishop to d2 uh we have um knight to d4 knight takes e5 knight takes b5 knight takes b5 d takes e5 castles cake side e takes d5 and now finally knight to d3 now we have queen to d5 very good move by black identifying the fact that he is threatening checkmate and also forking the knight so you are forking checkmate and a knight yeah you can fork a principle and a piece <laughs> anyway so um knight to f4 attacking the queen and then you simply play queen takes b5 um rook to e1 bishop to d6 f3 there's not really much to talk about in this game so i'm just speeding through it uh because already at this point black is winning and black does convert quite well bishop takes f4 bishop takes f4 rook a to uh d8 queen to c1 um queen queen to c5 check king up to king up to h2 g5 bishop to e5 knight goes to d7 bishop to c3 rook f to e8 and then queen to d2 and i'm about to eat the words i just said that black did convert convincingly actually here black makes a very big mistake black plays the move knight to f6 and his i and his reasoning behind playing that move is i have a discovered attack but this is something you should be very caref careful about with your discovered attacks and with your traits the question is what happens afterwards you should really question yourself as to what happens after don't just think on discovered attack attacking the queen if, if you just oh it's a discovered attack i'm attacking the queen you really end up making mistakes but if you look at what can my opponent do then you begin to see the errors in your position so the, white rightly sees this move rook takes um rook takes and uh bishop takes finally and now we have an even position uh black is no longer up in material we have rook to e6 um queen to d8 queen to f8 queen to d4 rook to d6 queen to e5 rook to d2 um 
rook to e1 bishop to c6 bishop to c6 is a little bit slow you could just simply try for example bishop takes here he can't take because you are he, he's absolutely pinned so you could have tried that um but that's not what happened here we had bishop to c6 queen to c3 queen to d6 check bishop to e5 queen a lot of maneuvering is going to happen here uh bishop to h8 queen to d6 check king to h1 f6 bishop takes f6 um rook to d4 uh bishop to h8 queen to f8 queen takes c6 rook to d8 uh bishop to f6 and rook to d6 and here i like the conversion that um white goes for so actually white won the game i just showed you a bit by saying black won the game so queen to c4 check king moves to another light square of course he has no choice he could have simply just blocked the queen with the queen here but he decided not to i i think maybe because of the rook coming in with check so that move was sort of forced uh king to h7 queen to uh e4 check king goes back and now queen to g6 check and after queen comes in you just take g7 with checkmate a very beautiful game by white identifying that whole cycle that leads to checkmate and that every move was forcing and white comes out with a very very good win so that is it for the under 11 um the next video we'll release is on the under 13 then after under this then we'll release the under 17 if you liked the video or if you enjoyed the video don't forget to drop a like leave a comment tell us what you didn't like about the video how we can improve our video if there are any specific games you want us to analyze we will look them up and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video peace